Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, Steed, on the premises of Casanova, Inc., found amongst the book-lined walls of the reception hall a door marked Rosebery Z. Glade, Director. As he opened the door, a woman's right, voice could be heard you. reading. Her blue eyes filled with tears. Defile me if you must, you villain, she whispered. But my soul will never be yours. Steed advanced into the room and looked at the attractive blonde who sat at a desk reading from a notebook. What do I care for your soul, replied the fiend. I have other fish to fry. With which base rejoined I, he put out a hand and... Not to see the blonde? Oh, sorry, Rosemary. I'm not Rosemary. He is. Steed followed her gesture. Behind the desk, leaning back with closed eyes, was a tall, elegant man. His hands were crossed. On one of his fingers was a diamond ring with an entwined hearts motif. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. Now try it. And it works. Beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on a general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Mm -hmm. And soon I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Now you can choose from Benolia's five new classic fragrances. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed diagnoses a severe case of romance, and Mrs. Peel goes even further and joins those who love all. John Steed was beginning to think that Emma Peel was right in insisting that love played a very big part in the security leak at the Department of Missile Redeployment. Several men working in the ministry had behaved in a very peculiar manner, and several other men were dead. It was clear that the enemy, whoever that might be, was aware that John Steed and Mrs. Peel were on the case and were out to stop them. Mother had sent Mrs. Peel back to the ministry, and John Steed had traced the concern known as Casanova, Inc., the headquarters of Rosemary Glade, the celebrated romantic writer. Steed quickly controlled his surprise when the tall, elegant man rose from behind the desk and said, I am Rosemary Z. Clay. And who are you? An admirer. You've been a heroine of mine for years. Yes, well, you've interrupted my flow. Rosemary, the flow? Uh, and, and, and your name is? Thelma. Oh, how could you be so thoughtless? Only trying to help. The master doesn't need help. He needs complete relaxation in order to feel the vibration. Vibration? From the astral plane. You don't suppose I could write the way I do if my mind wasn't in tune with the other world, do you? I don't indeed. And yet you come barging in here without so much as a buy or leave, just when complete rapport had been established. Too, too bad. Oh, dear. It's all right, Thelma. Don't upset yourself. Philistines will never understand. <sighs> what can I do for you? I'd like you to autograph my book. I only give autographs between 3 and 3.15 in the afternoon. Oh, what a shame. And I've bought every one of your books. All 349. Well, of course. I have them bound in purple Morocco. I had to get rid of my Bronte first editions to make room for them. Ah. 
then you're entitled to one of our rings, my dear sir. Rosemary opened a drawer in his desk and took out a box. He handed Steve a ring, one with the entwined heart motif. Oh, thank you. How extremely thoughtful of you. Now I feel one of the family. Well, since you're obviously a man of taste and refinement, I'll uh, sign your book. Steed whipped out a small pocketbook. How gracious of you. If you'll just put, um, uh, to John with love from Rosemary. Oh, certainly. There. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I, I met someone with one of these rings only the other day. Oh, who? I can't recall the name. A very large man. Had a black beard. Oh, yes. It sounds like Freeman. He's one of our employees. All our employees wear the ring. Is he here now? Uh, possibly. Uh, ask Mr. Bromfield. He's in charge of our printing department. Uh, through that door there. Thank you. As Steed moved off to the door indicated, Rosemary settled down and, closing his eyes, said, No, where was I? With which face rejoinder he put out his hand. Ah, yes, yes. He put out his hand and grasped the yielding flesh of her arm in a vice-like grip. Unhand me, you base villain, she cried, her heart in turmoil, or it will be the worse for you. De Quincey laughed, a harsh, rasping sound that chilled her to the marrow of her bones. Steed reached the printing room door, opened it, sighed, and closed it to find himself in the printing room. The man Bromfield approached. Uh, Mr. Bromfield? Yes, that's right. What can I do for you? I was looking for Freeman. You're not here at the moment. Is the uh, friend of yours? Yes, I told him how much I enjoyed the books, and he promised to show me around. I see. You're a fan, are you? A fan? But of course. I never go to sleep without a rosemary's head laid under my pillow. Love in the Bernese Oberland. That, that was my favorite. You've seen rosemary? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think I cut off it slow. I didn't worry. That particular fountain will never run dry. You see me? Yes, Mr. Bromfield. Bring Mr. Uh, oh, Steed. Uh, bring Mr. Steed an advanced copy of Love in Budley Salterton, will you? That you'd like to take it with you. It's hot off the press. Oh, too kind. The creature called Athene picked up a parcel and handed it to Bromfield. Not that one. You know perfectly well that those are forbidden. Already ordered. One from the other pile. There we are, Mr. Steve, with the compliments of Casanova Inc. Thank you. I hope it sends you to sleep as effectively as the others. And there? Oh, there, there is just one other little request. I've never seen a printing press in action. Uh, do you think I might leave by the other exit and walk through the plant? Certainly. Help yourself. He did by swiftly exchanging the book given to him with one from the top of the forbidden pile. No one saw the action. Amazing. But these small presses can produce so much magic. Bromfield gave Steve a keen look and said, Goodbye, Mr. Steve. I hope you enjoy the book. Steve shook hands, noting the now familiar ring, and left. Bromfield was standing staring after him thoughtfully when Martha, not in Charlie the guys, appeared from behind a pile of books and said, I see that man at the ministry. What? He came to question to Rodney. I saw him again in Kate's office. Then he's too close for comfort. We'll have to deal with him. How? Easy. The other fellow at the ministry is Fryer. He's in love with your Charlie act, isn't he? Mm-hmm. And all you have to do is ask him to do you a favor. Not all that while later. A favor? A favor for you. Of course. My darling, you have only to name it. Thank you, George. Oh, I knew I could count on you. Command me, then. I want you to get rid of somebody for me. Someone who's becoming a nuisance. A rival. His name. Quickly, his name. John Steve. Steve. I'll kill him. <laughs> He took the words right out of his mouth, George. John Seed, back in his apartment, opened the books he'd obtained from Casanova, Inc. The novel he discarded. The other book he opened and stared at in amazement. <laughs> All the pages are blank. I wonder what sort of... In the middle of the cover, a small indentation. A minute, sparkling eye. Fascinating. Steed closed the book and went to open the door. Oh, hello, 
Hello, Mr. Fryer. Is uh, something the matter? Well, come in. <laughs> Look, forgive me for mentioning it, but that um, gun you're holding, the uh, safety catch is off. But something tells me you knew that. I did. Put your hands above your head. <laughs> Why? Why are you pointing that thing at me? Because you're a philanderer. I beg your pardon? You've trifled with a woman I love. I haven't trifled all day. She told me so herself. And now you're going to pay for it. Uh, well, at least uh, tell me her name. Uh-huh. So she's one of many, is she? Just as I thought. One of nature's parasites. The world will be a cleaner place without you, my friend. Uh, look, can't we talk this over sensibly? That's what they all say. No. Well, in which case, there's nothing for me to do but... He stepped forward, grabbed the wrist that held the gun. With one swift movement, he forced the weapon out of Fryer's hand. Got a good grip and threw Fryer across the room. And all for the love of the lady. In the missile redeployment department, Mrs. Peel had been examining the office that had been occupied by Tate. She'd found the book marked Commission Report, Read, Digest, and Pass On. She'd been reading away with intense interest for hours. In the passage outside, Martha, in child lady outfit, whispered to Bromfield. She's in there. She's been reading the book. She's the girl I saw at Bell Chambers' perfume shop. She's on to us. Then she's solving the problem for us. Is the door locked? Yes. I locked it from the outside. <laughs> I shall be the first person she sees. But who let me in there? How dare you? What? Oh. Hello, my dear. I've come to take you away. Will you come with me? Oh, yes. Yes. I'd follow you anywhere. That kind of love isn't just blind. It's plain daft. <laughs> And with a final heave on the spanner, Ronnie Miller finishes changing his flat tire in just 6 minutes, 32 seconds. Well done, Ronnie. You play any other sports? I watch the car once in a while. You look very fresh, Ronnie. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easy indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inneken. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel. Is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.